Good morning, everybody. Dear members of the Pakistan's human rights community, esteemed panelists, colleagues, and friends, it's truly an honor to be here this morning to commemorate the enduring legacy of Asma Jangir, a trailblazing advocate whose unwavering dedication to human rights continues to inspire us all. In a world where the rights inherent to all human beings are increasingly being challenged, forums like this conference are vital. This conference serves as a crucial platform to exchange knowledge and nurture new ideas, explore solutions, and provide much needed support to members of the human rights community. I'm profoundly humbled by the wealth of experience and expertise gathered here today, and I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the organizers of the conference for their tireless efforts in fostering such essential dialogue. Asma Jangir's work in life provides an inspiration not just to speak about human rights, but to live these principles to concrete improve lives, the lives of people. I've been so privileged to live and work the past three years in Pakistan to represent Norway and its steadfast commitment to human rights and its defenders. I look forward to this opportunity to join discussions on urgent human rights issues from gender equality to media freedom, and the rights of minorities, which are only some of the topics which we'll be discussing today. This year, I've also been reflecting about my own personal experience about living and working here in Pakistan. Many of you may not know that my husband actually runs a school in Faisalabad. It offers, it actually was started by my husband's father in order to offer quality education. Access to schools, particularly for girls, remains a challenge for many in Pakistan, even though, needless to say, education is a human right. The school provides quality education for over 900 children. But what brings me perhaps the most joy when I visit the school is the speaker's corner. The idea is borrowed from England, where the first speaker corner is in Hyde Park. The idea that you can get on the speaker's box and have a debate on any subject. But the speaker's corner in this school does not only promote debates and public speaking, it also emphasizes that the idea that every child has an opinion that matters and you have the right to speak. It takes, of course, courage for a child to get up on the speaker's box and to put their opinions in front of their peers. When I see a girl getting up on the speaker's box, I, I think, think actually, actually about, about who is going to be the next Asma Jangir, and also that everybody has a child should, that should know that the right they have to speak about the voice that matters. It would be difficult for me to stand here attending a human rights conference and not mention the war in Gaza. I have served myself four years in Palestine, in Jerusalem, and it's a, it's a matter close to my heart. We're now more than six months into the war between Israel and Hamas, and the fighting and the attacks are still ongoing daily. Norway is deeply concerned about the humanitarian and human rights situation. We hope for the release of all hostages, humanitarian access, and an immediate ceasefire. But speaking truth to power is dangerous. This is why Norway has a priority to protect human rights defenders our objective is for human rights defenders to be able to carry out their work of promoting and defending human rights in all parts of the world, freely, safely, without encountering restrictions or threats to themselves or families. The term human rights defenders is not limited to the people formerly working in human rights organizations. They can be lawyers, teachers, journalists, and community leaders by defending the rights of groups of individuals who are not able to defend themselves. Last year, we celebrated the 75th anniversary for the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, a remarkable achievement for global human rights community, considering the central role declaration still plays in international discussion on human rights. However, in the same year, disturbing statistics from frontline defenders showed a rapid increase in the number of human rights defenders killed globally in 2010-22, documenting 401 deaths across 26 different countries. Unfortunately, it was a new record. Similar reports show human rights defenders are increasingly being subject to harassment, both online and offline. The harassment often extends to their closest families. 
This inaugural session, titled The Judiciary's Role Safeguarding Human Rights, is an apt reminder of the critical role of law as to pay in defending human rights. Failure to hold perpetrators responsible is a breach of the duty to protect human rights. Sometimes the lack of protection offered to human rights defenders stems from a misunderstanding of the work they do. Their effort aims to build more equitable and just societies and remind us of the obligations the states have to secure fundamental rights. As we reflect on Asma Jangir's indomitable spirit, let's recommit ourselves to advancing the legacy by promoting peace, equality, and human dignity for all. Once again, I extend my gratitude to AGS Legal Cell and all their participants for a dedication to this important cause in a time fraught with challenges. Thank you.